I wanna share a story with you today that might resonate if you've ever felt like holiday traditions have crossed a boundary. As Halloween approaches, this is a time when little moments like buying costumes can become huge for parents. But what happens when somebody else steps into those moments? Today, let me tell you about a mother-in-law who took her grandkids out for the day, just a simple adventure with grandma, but it turned into something much, much more when she ended up buying their Halloween costumes without checking with their mom first. As you can imagine, this hurt deeply, and now it's that time of year again, and the daughter-in-law can't help but be a little nervous that it's gonna happen again. This mom had been looking forward to taking her kids Halloween costume shopping for months. It's their little tradition, they make a whole day of it, but without warning, that tradition was hijacked by her mother-in-law. The mom is feeling like, oh crap, if I don't set a boundary with this, like this moment could be stolen again. So she knows that her mother-in-law didn't mean it out of malice, and she's afraid she's gonna hurt her feelings. So she's feeling really guilty that she even has to talk about it, but she's really scared that if she doesn't set a boundary, she's gonna resent her mother-in-law even more. I don't think this story is unique. It's one of those situations where intentions are pure and good, but boundaries get blurred and feelings end up getting hurt. What I hear this daughter-in-law struggling with mentally is, I feel guilty for needing to set this boundary because I don't want to hurt my mother-in-law, but if I don't set this boundary, I'm going to resent my mother-in-law. And these are very powerful, sometimes motivating emotions, but I can tell you one thing, resentment kills a relationship, guilt ends up passing. So what can this mom do differently this year? Well, because she can't change what has already happened, she can create clarity moving forward. Boundaries are not about controlling other people's behavior, they're about communicating your needs in a way that protects your peace and your relationship. She might say something like, Doreen, I know you love spending time with the kids. I'm super grateful for that. I just want you to know that I'm gonna be picking out the Halloween costumes with the kids this year. It's something very special to me and I wanted to make sure you knew that. With that script, she's not blaming the mother-in-law. She's not accusing her of maliciously crossing the line. She's just making a clear statement about what she needs. How can she mind this boundary? If this was me, I would be communicating with my mother-in-law about the ideas that the kids have for their costumes. So let's say my son decided he's gonna be a monster truck driver. I would say like, hey, uh, Doreen, uh, James decided he's gonna be a monster truck driver. And then once we figured out what my daughter's gonna be, I'm gonna be like, hey, Doreen, like Allie's gonna be a puppy again, but a different puppy. So I would include her in on all the planning process. And then once I picked the date to go shopping, like when is this tradition gonna take place? I would say, so next, Thursday, we're gonna be going shopping and picking out their costumes. Once we come home and they do their little try-on, I'll send you some pics for a little sneak peek. Again, including my mother-in-law so that she doesn't feel like I'm upset about last year, but that I'm still pulling her close. I'm allowing her to enjoy the whole tradition because, I mean, our kids in costumes, it's adorable and it just makes our, like the grandparents' heart just swell. So why would I, why would I keep her at bay for that? I would include her and pull her close for that. And that's how I would mind my boundary. Now, I do wanna say one thing, cause I know there's going to be at least one person, if not a few, and you're gonna say, yeah, it would be nice if my mother-in-law didn't do it out of malice, but she does things to like get to me or she does things on purpose to control things. Maybe, let's just say that. So let's say you did exactly, you just re rewound the tape, you did exactly what I said, you set the boundary, including her on things, like this is what so and so is gonna be, this is what so and so is gonna be, we're gonna go next Thursday, I'll send you pics, all that stuff, and she still takes your kids, gets the costumes out from under you, and takes your tradition. Okay, let's say all of that happened, and when they show up, she's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, Stephanie. We were just walking past the costume store, and the kids went in there without, I mean, I couldn't even stop them. And they were just so excited. I had to buy them. Like now James is, you know, he didn't really want to be a monster truck driver. He's a cowboy and Allie's a vampire or whatever. I would say, oh, okay. Well, like I said, Doreen, I'm going to be taking the kids uh, costume shopping. So you can either take the costumes back and get a refund because this is not what they're going to be going as. Or if you want the kids to keep the costumes, I'm sure they would love it when they play dress up. So that's how I would hold my boundary and I would give my mother-in-law a choice. Do you want to take the costumes back and get a refund for your money? Or would you like the kids to keep the costumes for when they play dress up? Before we sign off, let's talk just more in general because I know we have different parent types on here 
And just holidays in general can stir up a lot of expectations and without boundaries, they can lead to disappointment, which breeds resentment and that breaks down relationships. So let's go through a couple scenarios and what you can do. Let's say you're the type of parents that when your in-laws or, or even your parents come over, it's like your kids forget who you are. Like their grandparents are celebrities to them. And you just wanna be able to make memories with them. You want to experience trick-or-treating with them and you don't wanna be left in the dust. I would say, mom and dad, we're gonna take the little, little ones out trick-or-treating for 30 minutes first and then we'll swing by your house, pick you guys up once we're on that side of town. So I would get 30 minutes being the stars until we are sidelined by grandma and grandpa. Let's say you're the type of parent that you just don't want to make a big deal about this. Like you don't want this big event. You, you want to keep it simple. You just want to go out trick-or-treating to a few houses low key and you just don't want to make this a big event. I would say, hey mom and dad, we're going to take the kids out just for a little bit, not too many houses. We'll make your house the last stop so we can come get photos and the kids can spend a little time with you before they have to get to bed. And for the parents who receive passive aggressive comments after they set a boundary. Let's say you tell your mom and dad or your in-laws that you're going to pick them up 30 minutes after you start trick-or-treating. So you're not going to all start off at your house. You're going to go as a family for a little while and then everyone can join in after a little bit. Let's say you get a snide remark like, hmm, I guess you don't want us around. I would kindly and calmly respond, oh, no, that's not at all what I'm saying. We are going to go out just as a family, just the four of us for 30 minutes, and then we'll pick you guys up once we get to that side of town. I would pay minimal attention to their passive aggressive comment. I would stay calm, and then I would just reiterate what my boundary is or what the plan is so that they know what to expect, and just I would just stay consistent. Again, just like the daughter-in-law, she's worried about feeling the boundary guilt, but she also knows that if I don't set a boundary, I'm gonna resent my mother-in-law if she crosses the line again, which she very well could because she doesn't even know the line's there. And what I have to say to that is the boundary guilt, that feeling of guilt, like you're disappointing somebody or you're not making them happy, that passes. And that's not damaging. Resentment that erodes and eventually breaks down your relationship. So I would pick boundary guilt every time. The boundaries we set don't push our loved ones away. They give us space to show up fully in our relationships. As the holidays come closer, just think of the moments that are really important to you. Make sure you set clear expectations now so that you keep resentment at bay and everyone's very clear and on the same page. Whether it's about costumes, trick-or-treating, or other traditions, stay clear and kind in your communication. And here's the biggest takeaway. Remember, the person setting the boundary is the person in charge of minding the boundary. And in doing so, you create room for stronger relationships. You YouTube thinks you'll like this video and until next time friend make sure you keep minding your boundaries. Bye!